Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Gaylor and I'm at Easy Trail Outdoors today. This is my family's outdoor store and I would like to talk to y'all about the first rod you need in your bass fishing setup. You could be just getting into it, you could be doing it for a few years, but if you're really starting out bass fishing and whether you're a young kid or an older person, this is my recommendation for the first rod you should buy. Um, it doesn't have to be expensive. It'd be better if it would be kind of spend some money on it like anything else in life. This is going to be my opinion of the best rod to buy if you can only buy one. Best one to start out. You may not even know if you like fishing. You may not even know if you like bass fishing. But this rod here can get you started. Um, you may have some rods already. But they may be like ultralight rods for bluegill or crappie fishing. So you don't want to use those bass fishing. You could, but there's going to be a very little few baits that you could use with that rod. This rod here, I'm going to show you what it is, different options, what reel to put on it, what line, and what all baits you can and cannot use with it. So the first rod I would recommend is, it would be a spinning rod. It's a seven foot medium action rod. Um, you could do shorter, if you're a shorter person or a little kid, you could do like a six six or anywhere in between. Or you could do longer if you want to. I like, I'm like, about 6'1", tall wise. And a, I can use, I use eight foot rods in their final feet. But if you're in a kayak, you may want to go shorter rod. I personally in a kayak, I use eight foot rod and it's fine. But I like a seven foot medium action. This first rod I'm gonna show y'all is a combo. And the combo means that you get a rod and a reel all together for one price. That's probably your cheapest, most budget option, most likely. This is a Lose Mach 1 with a Lose Mach 1 reel. It's a 300 size. Um, this rod is seven foot medium. It says action is moderate taper, which I'd really have a fast taper. Um, lure weight says one eighth to half ounce. So this rod's a good kind of budget option. It's a hundred dollar rod. I know to some of y'all that's a very expensive rod, but bass fishing, you really need to pay for you kind of pay for what you get with anything fishing or anything in life, pretty much. But to get in a rod and reel for $100, that's a pretty budget, cheap option bass fishing. So if you're, don't, if you're wanting to spend like 50 bucks, you may have to go to Walmart and buy some dirt cheap rod and reel, and it's probably gonna, gonna last you more than a year if you're seriously using it. But at the $100 range for a rod and reel, it should last you several years. Most likely. The reel would probably be the first thing would tear up maybe. I don't know that personally or like by experience, but these are about a $60 reel. So they're entry level. This whole rod is entry level, but it's nice. It is two piece, which I don't recommend. But if you just have a small car or if you don't have any way to store it, that's fine to go with. I would highly recommend getting a one piece rod you don't have to fight with it being crooked or anything on you or it popping off or it's probably not going to be quite as sensitive being a two-piece rod so any kind of combo would be what i recommend as an easy get in the game kind of rod and reel for the reel i'd recommend this is the 300 size i recommend the 250 2500 just different brands go by different sizes or the 300 3,000 size. It's the same thing, just somebody at other companies at a zero on the end. Um, after this, you get into the single rod, single reel category. So next up, we have this line of individual rods. I'm going to start out with, I'm going to start out with Dobbins. That's my favorite brand of rod. That's what I use. That's what I've used for almost 10 years now, and I have extreme confidence in it, in the product, in the company everything so i'm going to start out with their lower end is the coat series and it's the 703 so this is the dobbins coat 703 70 means seven foot and three power three is the power and that means medium it's a seven foot one piece eight to 17 pound test line three sixteenths to five eighths ounce medium fast action 
So the big difference between this rod and the combo is fast action. The combo had a moderate action, and what that basically means is at the tip of the rod, when it loads up, you can see how much more, well, I'd have to compare the other rod to you, but this rod has from about that fourth guide right here, it really bends a lot, and then back here at about the fifth guide, fifth and sixth guide, it has the backbone comes into it. So you can see how much shorter the tip is, and I'll show you all the other rod comparing to it. You, I would prefer a fast action like this, and that's what you're gonna get with a higher end rod, because that's like a $50 rod. This is a $80 rod, $79.99. Um, it's probably gonna be more sensitive than the other rod, just because it's better components. Um, the Dobbins Coats do have a one year warranty. Once you get into the higher end ones, they have a lifetime. But this is a, the coat is a very good starting point. That's just probably, if you could spend 150 bucks instead of $100 on a rod and reel, I would go this Dobbins coat. That'd be my personal opinion. So the modern action on this luge rod, if I bend the tip like that, you can see how it's got less of a bend up here at the tip. It goes farther back into the rod. It bends, it keeps bending all the way to the, about the sixth guide right here. And then it gets into the backbone. And that softer tip, you're gonna, it's gonna be better for treble hook baits, but it's gonna be worse for your single hook baits. And it even has some bend back here in the backbone too, where this coat is gonna be stiffer. See how much stiffer that is? Right here is a little lighter, then the tip is quite a bit lighter. So that's your fast action versus moderate action rod difference. And your moderate action, it's better for um, treble hook baits, but it's also gonna be found in your cheaper rods, if that makes sense. Yes, you can get high-end moderate action rods, but they're really for a specific purpose, normally with treble hook baits, like a good expensive cranking rod. Okay, so I'm putting the Dobbins coat up, and then we're gonna to go to the next model up. This is their next one in the line. It is a Fury 703, same as the coat, just the next model up. So the Dobbins Fury, it's gonna next level up from the coat. They are $129.99 versus $79.99. This is where I would recommend, whether you're starting out or whether you've been fishing for years, this is the line I would recommend you going with if you're not gonna spend a lot of money on a rod. For $130, you really can't beat this rod. There's some other ones in the market that compare to it, but for everything you get with this rod, I don't know if there's another one better on the market. Personally, I would go with this. I would be, I have a little bit higher end rods, and if I sold all my high, high end rods and went to Fury, I think I'd still be happy. It's not gonna be quite as crisp and everything and totally being able to feel every little pebble and when the fish breathes on your bait, you won't be able to feel that as well with a high end rod or with this as a high end rod, but you get the feel of more of a high end rod. And for some people, $130 rod is a high-end rod, but it's really not. So if you think that way, just give you some few years in the bass fishing market and you'll learn. Anyways, with the Fury, you're getting, you still have the foam back here on the back, on the butt section, but you're getting cork on the handle, which I like cork, some people don't. You're getting a higher modulus scrap fight blank, which you'll be able to feel better. And all these Dobbins rods, they're very well balanced. So... With a reel on it, it'd be even more balanced, but your balance point's right here. Um, it's gonna be lifetime warranty where the coat is one year. So this would be, you buy this rod once and if it breaks or anything, you're gonna get a replacement every time. You gotta pay a little bit, but not the price of a new rod for 130 bucks. You're gonna be half of that, like 50 bucks, I think, 50 or 60. I'm gonna put this Fury up on the Dobbins rack and the Fury line is our best-selling rod line. 
Let's see. Next up, we have the Sierra. Here is the Sierra 703. There's also a Caden. I'm not sure if it has a 703. I'm sure it has some kind of three power rod, but that's a good rod also. So with the Dobbin Sierra series, this is really your entry level higher end rod. I guess not high end, but like your, I guess serious tournament fishing, that kind of guy rod. You're at the, let's see, 180 price range, 179.99. So you're really kind of getting up there in price. If you're just starting out and don't know if you even like fishing or not, I probably wouldn't go this far. I would probably go to the Fury as your high-end rod, um, or even like the $100 combo. But if you're, you know you like fishing, you know you're gonna wanna be super serious into it, maybe get in tournaments, whatever. I would start here, well, I would probably start at the Fury, and then if you can swing it, you can swing the extra money, go to this. It's gonna be well worth the extra 50 bucks or whatever it is. Um, with the Sierra, you're getting full cork, higher grade cork. You're getting Fuji reel seats, which I think all the Dobbins have Fuji reel seats. I'm not 100% sure on that, but. Um, better quality blank. This is when you get really into your filling rods. The Sierra, Caden, and up. You're gonna be able to really fill the, the baits and the bites and stuff like that. Um, you get Fuji Alkanite guides, which is a higher quality guide. Um, this rod is more balanced and lighter weight. So if you can swing 180 bucks, I would definitely go to this. It's definitely worth it. If not, the Fury line is fine. So we're gonna put the Sierra back on the rack and go to our last Dobbins option that I have. It's a champion series. So Dobbins Champion uh, XP 703. Same power and everything as the last rods. But this, the champion line, there you're like 260 price range. So you're getting up there in the higher end rods. This is like the middle to high end rod in the bass fishing world. They can go as high as five, six hundred dollars or even more. But the champion line is your workhorse, I'm a every weekend tournament fisherman kind of rod. This is what you, this is the rod you want when you got money on the line, pretty much. It's gonna give you the best of everything. Not the best, but the best money can buy in this price range rod. You can get higher grade cork, um, better blank, lighter blank, a Fuji Alkanite ring, K-Guide, so they're gonna be lighter weight and stronger. Very durable rod. I've had some of these for almost 10 years now and they're still going strong. It's even before the XP series came out. But these are awesome rods. This is what, if you can swing 260 bucks, I would say go for this. Starting out, you may not really need to do that, but if you're wanting to be serious about tournament fishing or getting into bass fishing, or if you just got money to blow, go with the Champion Series. You won't go wrong. Um, still the 3 to 5 8 ounce medium fast action. Awesome rod. And I'm going to show y'all my personal pick for this 7 foot medium action rod series. This is my champion pre XP series, just a champion series. I've had this for probably 7 8 years now. Never had a problem with it. Awesome rod. I have it paired up with a Daiwa Procyon 2500 size reel. And $260 rod and $150, $60 reel, somewhere around there. You can't go wrong with this setup. It's For the money, you're gonna spend a lot more to go better, I feel like. This is, this would be one of the last rods I'd give up if I had to give up some rods. So we're gonna put this Champion up and we're gonna go through some other brands and see what they offer. Here is a Cashin. Um, let's see, here's a Daiwa. I think this is the right rod. 6.8 medium, close enough. Um, here's a 13. That's a 7.1 seven, seven one medium lot. Here's a 6.7 medium. 
and then here is a Shimano. I think this one's a 7.1 medium light, but we'll get it anyways. So here is a Cashin CRT spinning rod. It's also a seven foot medium action. And one of the really cool things about Cashin is they're all made in America. They're made in North Carolina. Um, they have a really cool grip on them. And this is a, it's a like, real textured grip, so it's rough. It's not very big, like a normal one is probably down to here, but it's really grippy. You do have a foam foregrip thing here in front of your reel. And instead of the dobbins where your reel seat screw part is, it's on the front, this one's on the back. So it's a little different design. Um, pretty good filling rod. I've not fished with these, but they feel, they feel pretty good. They probably don't feel as balanced as the dobbins, but they're still a good rod. And these are $129.95, so they're the same price as a Fury. Uh, it's a seven foot fast, so you still got the fast action tip, medium action, six to 12 pound line, one eighth to half ounce. So they're rated a little bit heavier than the Dobbins, but they're still the same ballpark. That's a good option rod. Next up we have, next up we have a Daiwa. This is a Daiwa Fuego. And these are, 80 bucks, 79.99. They're all foam, no foregrip up here. You have the front screw part on the real seat, like the um, Dobbins. They're real slick finish, kind of like the, the coat's the same way. Um, this rod is rated, let's see, quarter to three quarter ounce. So this is a heavier rated uh, medium action rod. Um, let's see. It's a six eight medium fast action. The six eight versus seven foot is just personal preference. If you're a shorter person or a kid or small lady or something, you may want to go with a shorter rod. It's just whatever you want. This rod feels pretty good. It's kind of on the level as the coat. Um, good option. It's kind of a nice looking pretty rod, especially for that price. Next up we have the 13. It's a 13 to 5 black. And this is the cheapest rod, it's 60 bucks. So if you're wanting to get into the $100 range of a rod and reel, like that combo was, this would be a good rod for you. This rod is 6.7, so it's shorter again. Um, it's a medium action fast. So instead of a moderate action like that combo, this one's a fast action. So probably better rod than the combo, but you'd probably have to go to like a $40 reel to get into the $100 range. Um, the lure weight is 3 16 to 5 8 I think that's the same as the Dobbins were. So it's a really good feeling rod for the money. Feels real lightweight for that price. Pretty well balanced. I don't think you could go wrong with this. I don't know about durability wise, but they feel pretty durable. They have a rougher feel, if you can hear that. That's how some of the higher end dobbins are. It's just cosmetic. It's not really anything important. Some people don't like that feel. I don't care. Just whatever you want. The best way to do is come to a shop like ours and fill these rods and feel what's best to you. They have foam on the handles and the rear facing screw part. And one cool thing is for this cheaper rod, they have um, an exposed reel seat. That um, Daiwa didn't even have that. So that's really cool. That will give you a little more sensitivity because it's right there on your reel. And then the last rod we have in our store is the Shimano SLX. These are a very good rod for the $100 range. So it's in between the Coat and the Fury. I would rank this probably more like the Fury. So it's a really, really good value for the $100 range. You do get the foam instead of the cork. You get a front screw part of the real seat with no foregrip. Um, this is a seven foot medium light. 
they make this as a medium. I just I'm out of it right now, so I'm not going to read you the lure specs and stuff. It's got a kind of exposed graphite feel, kind of like the Fury and the some of the other rods. Um, this is a really good rod. I've used my wife has one of these. It feels really well. It does feel kind of easily broken. I've had a few of these come back broken, but not bad. Um, they're very lightweight. They're pretty well balanced, but they do kind of, because they're so lightweight, they feel, and I'm going by light, lightweight by feel. I'm not going by weighing it on the scale. I'm not getting that too specific with it, I guess. They just feel like they could snap easy. Not gonna knock them though, they're a really good rod, especially for $100. So now that I've showed you all some rods that I recommend, I'm going to show you some reels. I showed you my Procyon 2500. That is actually a Procyon 3000. I would recommend any 2500 to 3000 size. I really like the Daiwas. This is the Daiwa Acceler. There's a 3000 and a 2500 both right there. So the 2500 size is going to be a little smaller than this. 3,000 size, the body's a little smaller, the spool's a little smaller. With Daiwa's you get a normal style handle with the 2,500, then with the 3,500, or the 3,000 you get the T-handle. And this is just kind of personal preference. 2,500 is going to be a little lighter. You can hold more line with 3,000. I prefer this, the 2,500, just because the a little bit extra lightweight and that handle, I prefer it over the T-handle. But it's all personal preference for a really good budget reel i don't have one here i've sold out of them see daiwa revros they're 60 bucks and they're the best cheap or not that 60 bucks ain't necessarily cheap but they're the best budget lower end reel i found and even the excel for a hundred dollar or excel for eighty dollars or the procyon for 170 those are really good reels for their price. Um, sh these are Shimano's. There's a Sahara for 80 bucks. There is, this one's $100. It's the Nas Nasci, or I don't know how you say it. N-A-S-C-I. Then you got the Otegra for 160. Any of those are pretty good. I still like my Daiwas. Um, we've got a 13. GT or Cree GT for 90 bucks. That's a 2000 size, so it's a little small. Um, that's a small reel. We got the Lose KVDs. There's several different sizes of those. They're $90. Then the Mach 1, which is what came on that combo rod, it's 60 bucks. That's the same exact reel that was on that combo. So you're getting a $100 combo with a $60 reel on it. Um, any of these reels will be fine. If you're wanting to put it on like a champion or a higher end rod, I would definitely go with the Procyon or maybe even the Otegra Shimano. I just tend to like these better. That's what I use. I like Daiwas. I like Daiwas and Dobbins. That's my personal preference. That's my opinion. You may hate them. That's your opinion and you're entitled to it. Just try them out. Go to a store like ours and try them out. So if you're going like the champion route, I would go with a Procyon, something in that price range, the $150, $200 range. If you're going Fury or even less, or I guess anything less than Champion, I would still stick with that Revros, 60 bucks. You can always upgrade the reel later. You got a good, I'd rather spend the money on the rod starting out with, because that's how you're gonna fill your fish, that's how you're gonna do everything. I mean, that's your tie between you and the fish, and your line, of course, but. Spend the money on the rod, and then buy you a Revros or a cheaper reel like that. I really like the Revros for 60 bucks. I've had them for a few years, and they hold up. They're good reels, and they feel like a $100 plus reel. So, higher end rod if you can, Revros if you don't have the extra money to buy two higher end reels. For line, if you're going monofilament, I would stick with, a, you want a smooth handling line, like a, one that won't kink up. Like if you're going tri-lane, there's XT and XL. XL is extra limp. 
and XT is extra tough. So this is smooth casting, like it says. That's what you want in a spinning reel. Um, I like eight pound, sometimes six, but a good all around line is eight pound. So pick you a mono, eight pound, starting out, start with mono. It's easiest to handle, cheapest, all the pluses. Um, next, if you want to get a little more advanced, go fluorocarbon and you got to be picky with the spinning reel and fluorocarbon. Don't go red label cigar. It'll just spool off your reel pretty much. It's not that good for, it's great and cheap for a bait caster, but not a spinning rod. Go with a cigar and Vizex. It's more money, 25, 49, but it's gonna actually, it's as soft and easy to cast. That's what you want on a spinning rod. Since it's not wound on a spool good, it's wrapped around a spool, it wants to poof off, kind of. And that Invisex won't do that. Same with your mono, it won't do that. Unless you get a bad mono, then it will. Next up from fluorocarbon is braided line. And that's really popular nowadays. Lots of guys do braided line to fluorocarbon leader. That's more of an advanced thing. So starting out, just stick with mono. It'll do everything you need to do and get you started. If you do want to go braid, um, either there's different strands of braid. Nine's going to be a little smoother, eight or nine, like the J braid. Um, there's four or five strand that's going to be a little rougher. Um, I would probably go with the eight or nine strand, or if it doesn't matter, just go with like your basic Power Pro or something like that. You just got to play with different lines and see what you like. You can either go straight braid or braid the four carbon leader, and then you'll have to learn how to tie your um, knots to tie the two lines together. That's a whole nother video for another day. Um, starting out, stick with mono. That's what I recommend. So next, I'm gonna walk around the store and show y'all what baits you can and cannot use with this seven foot uh, medium action spinning rod. Rooster tail, not really bass fishing. It can be. Your heavier ones you can use. Your real lightweight ones, you're gonna have a hard time throwing it. Um, same way with these little spinners. It's not really bass fishing stuff, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Drop shot. If you don't know what drop shot is, look it up. Little small baits with a sinker underneath. Yes, you can use this rod for drop shot. It's perfect for it. Maybe a little on the heavy side, but it's perfect for it. Um, this is a twin tail grub. That's more of a trailer. Um, drop shot worm, drop shot. Just a single tail grub. This you can put a jig head on it and use it perfectly on this rod. That's a spinnerbait trailer, grubs, more grubs, grubs, Ned rig. All these baits, if you don't know what they are, look them up. This is, I don't have time to go through every, explain every single bait. I'm just going to show you all what will work on this rod. Ned rig will work on this rod. I prefer a medium light rod, but this medium action rod will work fine. Ned rig stuff, um, your smaller worms, shaky head worms, trick worms, perfect for this rod. This is the rod I would use for that stuff. It's what this rod's made for. Um, let's see, getting into bigger worms. Once you get into your magnum trick worms, it's a little heavier than the rod locks, but it can still do it. Just don't, th don't go super heavy on the weight. Cinco's, this rod's perfect for it. So you can do all this worm stuff pretty much so far. Cinco's or stick worms, whatever you want to call them. These little paddle tail worms, perfect for that. Paddle tail worms, speed worms. Now we're getting to the U-tail, like six inch normal style worms. These are perfect for this rod too. Just don't go too heavy on the weight. Now these Magnum super monster worms, like the bull worm, that's a little too heavy for this rod. You could definitely do it like weightless or with a small sinker, but it's going to be overpowering that rod. Um, same with these big worms. All the big worms, you can do it with this rod. Just don't go super heavy with it. So I would say that's possible. Um, let's see. Rush hogs, yes, you can do all them. Just don't go heavy with it. These are all creature baits and flipping stuff. Flipping baits like beaver style baits. 
yes, you can totally use these baits with that rod. Just once again, don't go heavy on your weights and heavy cover and stuff like that. These are gonna be more open water, light cover. Um, you're not punching grass with it. You just can't do that with this rod, it's too light. You're gonna probably mess your rule up, break your line, probably break the rod. Is not what it's designed for. But most of the, all those plastics, you can use that. Now we're getting into jig trailers and jigs. Yes, totally use a jig on this rod, just not like a half ounce or bigger. You wanna stay probably three eighths and yet less. You could maybe go half ounce, but I wouldn't. Like the Dobbins, they weren't really rated for a half ounce. Some of the other ones were, but it's really gonna be pushing the medium action rod. You're really gonna need a medium heavy or a heavy. Football jigs, yeah, if you wanna go to a lightweight one, like three eighths and under, three sixteenths, five sixteenths, whatever. Just don't, don't go over half. And half is really kind of pushing it. So you can do it, just be careful with it. Um, let's see, we're gonna go back over here. Top water, yes, you can do all these top waters. Especially with your mono line, you're gonna need mono or braid. Don't use fluorocarbon with top water. All these top waters will be fine. That's uh, gonna be, don't use a big honking top water like this. The rod's too lightweight. It's too, well, it's not heavy enough. Heavy action enough. It's not made to handle that, that big of a bait. So all your normal size baits, all your spook juniors, even a normal spook is gonna be kind of the max of this rod, like that size. You wanna go more of a smaller size. It'd be the best for this rod. Jerk baits. Jerk baits are gonna be perfect for this rod, especially if you have the shorter rod. I prefer like a 6'6 six six rod for jerk baits. Seven foot's fine, but it's just harder on hitting the water when you're jerking down like, especially in a kayak. Um, bass boat's not as big of a problem, but it's still a problem. All these jerk baits are perfect for this rod. Tubes are perfect for this rod. These lids are perfect for this rod. Just don't go heavy. Like the Magnum Lizard with a heavy sinker, don't do that. Go Magnum Lizard with a light sinker. Same as these big worms. Now we're in the rattle traps and lupus crankbaits. I would say stick to the quarter ounce. That's gonna be the optimal setup for this rod. Yes, you can do half ounce. Just do not do a three quarter ounce. These big, big ones here, don't do those. Half ounce, maybe. Just be careful, don't overload your rod. Um, stick with the quarter ounce. These small crankbaits, KVD 1.0s, 2.5s, not these. These are the big 8.0s, they're too heavy. Stick with your normal size crankbaits. Don't go real big on crankbaits. Once you're getting into like the 5 series, 5 and 6 and 5 XDs and 6 XDs, I wouldn't use this rod. Um, you could, but I wouldn't. Like I would stop at the, like the 3 XD probably. Maybe a 5 XD, but probably not. Definitely a 3 XD and under. 5, 6 XD, 5 maybe, 6 and up, no. Don't even try an 8 or 10 XD. You'll destroy your rod. Um, these little walleye crankbaits, that's fine. Big crankbaits like that, no. Little crankbaits, yes. These big crankbaits, no. Anything real big and heavy and deep diving crankbaits, don't do it on this rod. It's too much for it. Little crankbaits is where this thing shines. Uh, don't throw no DD-22 on this rod. Little OG Slims, perfect for this rod. That's what I would use. Um, MR6 is perfect. Big Spros, no. These Spros, that should be fine. Um, Bandit's perfect for this rod. Smaller crankbaits, like DT10s and down. Don't do a 14 and up. Do DT10s and down, 10, 6s, 4s, whatever. That's perfect for this rod. Stick to that. Okay, now we're in our middle room. And I'll show y'all some swim bait stuff. And flukes. Flukes are perfect for this rod too. So we've got the Mickey rigs, 
uh, it'd be good for this rod. It's a little heavy of a rod for it. I'd, like, I'd prefer a medium light, but it's fine. It's flukes, perfect for this rod, especially weightless. It's amazing setup. Um, flute sticks, good for this rod. The full size one is a little heavy, but it's fine. These bigger swim baits don't do it. Go like this size swim bait with a smaller head. Don't do these big ones. Do like these smaller ones. These are 3.3 uh, Kitek and down probably. Maybe a 3.8. I'd probably go 3.8 and down. Say that. 4.3s and up, not so much. You could probably do a 4.3. Once you get to the 4.8s, that's just going to be too heavy. So 4.3 maybe, 3.8 and down. These little easy shiners and the swing impact, not fat ones, are going to be perfect for it. Don't do these big swim baits. Stick to small ones. Stick to these. Stick to the fluke style baits. Um, don't be trying to throw something like this on it. That's 1.19 ounces. That's over double of what that rod's rated for. Don't even try that kind of stuff. Smaller swim baits. Little buzz worm things, fine. Um, little small swim baits. This would be fine. That's perfect. It's 3 8 ounce, quarter ounce. Those are all perfect. Um, whopper ploppers. Don't go no, don't throw some big honking 130 size whopper plopper. That is a 1 and 3 8 ounce bait. Don't throw that on this rod. Throw your little 90 series. This one's a half ounce. That's still going to be kind of pushing this rod. But I wouldn't go any bigger than the 90 size whopper plopper. That should be fine. Um, don't try to throw a 110 or 130. Um, let's see. Spoons. Don't even try these bigger one ounce spoons. Stick to smaller stuff. There's a little cast masters. Something like that. That's a half ounce. That's going to be like the max spoon you want to throw. There's some blade blades I'm out of right now. Those are fine. They're just like the rattle traps pretty much. The lipless crankbaits. Just don't go crazy on the weight. So going around this aisle. First we have frogs. There's a toad buzz. And like your honey toad style baits. Like these and the ribbits. Um, this rod would be okay for this. It's a little heavy but it would work. As long as you're not in real heavy grass, it'll be fine. Open water or like just light grass would be fine. Um, these, your hollow body frogs, the soft ones, use a small frog like this jackal. Um, don't be using like, say there's a baby strike king, use that. Don't use a big frog. Um, Big frogs is too heavy for it, especially in grass. Small frog, you can get away with it, or it's fine for it, really. Uh, especially open water or light grass. You could probably use, well, I doubt it. You probably couldn't. I mean, you could, but I don't know how much the weight is. Anyways, with these frogs, their hooks are really big, so it's going to be hard to set that hook on with this kind of finesse rod with that medium power um, buzz baits yeah you can do it any of them will be fine it's just gonna be hard to real really quick to get that buzz bait up on top of the water with the spinning reel you can do it and it's fine but there's a better option out there spinner baits do not go with a big heavy one that's a 3 8 so stay 3 8 and lower there's a half I probably wouldn't even go a half but definitely don't even try like a three quarter or one ounce. Like there's a one ounce. Don't try that. Stay with like three eighths and less. Or if you really want to, go a half ounce. But I wouldn't recommend it. Um, same way with those. That's all spinner baits. And there's also, we've got chatter baits up here. I'm out of my normal chatter baits, my originals. So I just have the jackhammers and the thunder crickets. Same way with the spinner baits, just stick with the 3 8 ounce. Don't go half ounce. Or definitely don't go three quarter. So before you take my word for these rods and just go order one, especially if you order like a high end one on my word, go to a shop, go to a shop like ours or Academy or Bass Pro, wherever, and fill these rods. 
Um, feel of them, feel how they're balanced, feel, take two of them in each of your hands, or one in each hand, and feel how, feel the balance of them, feel how tip heavy they are, and compare them. Um, look at the components of them, feel how they feel in your hand. If you can, put a reel on them and feel of them, because that's how you're going to really feel how well they're balanced. You want them as balanced to that real handle as you can. <clears throat> um, usually your money gets, I mean, the more you pay, the better feeling rod you're going to get. Once you get above like the champion line, like the 250 sign, it's probably not as important. But start out with a good rod, or start out with the best rod you can afford. Just don't go into buying doing it, you don't really need it. You can start out with the combo like I showed you for a hundred bucks. hundred dollars is still expensive for some people. It is for me, but I've done it for years. I've fished for about 20 years now, bass fishing. And I've started out with cheaper stuff and slowly worked my way up to the high end stuff or higher end stuff. <clears throat> so just take your time, enjoy the cheap stuff, learning. It's great to learn on. Um, it may last you a few years, it may last you one year. So just get started, get something get a fifty hundred dollar rod or whatever you can afford if it's used that'd be great too just get started get out there go fishing that's my best advice for you all just try it you'll never know if you love it or not or if you even like it or whatever unless you try it just try fishing get your first rod and go out there and try thanks for watching and check back next time to see what the second rod is i recommend you all to get bye